Okay, so they're held in custody overnight. Yep. Came to pass on the next day that their rulers, elders, and scribes, as well as Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and as many as were of the family of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem. This is... This is, again, this is the heavy, heavy hitters. Right. Like, they're right. bringing in the very influential. Right. And here's a key here. When we're reading this and we, we're looking at religious leaders, one of the reasons why they denied the resurrection is because of what it would have cost them as religious leaders. Absolutely. It would have cost them position. Yeah, it did. Yes. Power. Yes. When you talk about religion and politics, they're not always separate. No. Because for some people, politics can become religion. Yes, it can, and religion can become politics. Yes, yes. When you're talking about power, political yeah. clout, yeah. all of those different things. Yeah, the ability to influence. That's right. Verse 7, and when they had set them in the midst, so they'd taken them into custody, now they're just putting them out in front of everybody. They ask, by what power or what name have you done this? Speaking of the lame man, keeping that in context, right, yeah. bones popping. Yeah. Then Peter, here's the key, Filled with the Holy Spirit. He's not empty. <laughs> He's not going, hey, wait a second. I gotta listen to uh I gotta listen to some words of music and get in the mood. <laughs> hey, I gotta <laughs> yeah. like somebody give me my beats. Yeah, you know, give get, me a, give me, me Bethel or Elevation or yeah. give me Red Rocks or something. Yeah. Like I need some worship. Like yeah. no, Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders of Israel. Now these guys have already preached the gospel. They've already talked about the resurrection dead, and now they're bringing an account again. Verse 9 is so strong. If we this day are judged for a good deed done to a helpless man, by what means he has been made well, that word well there means whole, yes. takes on even a connotation of the Greek word sozo, right? Right. Meaning whole. That's not just talking about his physical body. Right. Right? That's talking about his spirit and his what? Also talking about his his mind, his soul, his, his soul, his, you know the the that soulish part, that even the emotional side of him. That's right. So he says, if we're this deed, it, we're judged this day for a good deed done to a helpless man. By what means he has been made well? Let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, yes, huge, right, that it includes of Nazareth, yes. A lot of people were. A lot of people had the name Yeshua. Yep. A lot of people did. Christ Messiah could be ascribed to anybody, but this is a specific person that's being ascribed to, of Nazareth, whom you crucified. But then he adds again, whom God raised from the dead. He yes. continues to say that he never talks about crucifixion without talking about resurrection. Right. Yeah. Then he says, by him, capital H. This man stands here before you whole, sozo. Again, not a Led Zeppelin album. No, not a Led Zeppelin album. <laughs> I haven't heard that one. But so zo. Yes. Meaning whole, healed. Now, Carlos, we know that the guy was not healed physically immediately. Right. We just know that his bones popped. He got up. He began to run and leap. But then he had to lean on Peter and John. Yep. So we know that he wasn't fully healed yet. Right. We know that there have been many words for the word healing throughout this, right. but none of them have come to Sozo until now. Right. So now Peter is saying the guy's not just, his feet aren't the only thing that's well. Right. His legs aren't the only thing yes. that's well. But now his spirit and his mind, why is it so important for this scripture to say whole, especially when it has to do with this lame man at the gate. Well, it's important that we understand that that even it goes back to where it talks about in the in prophecy that by his stripes we are healed. That this this atonement, the issue of the atonement, I, and I love how they made sure that they made a strong distinction of who they're talking about. Yep. Jesus Christ. Of Nazareth, yep. whom you crucified, just in yep. case you guys forgot. That's right. This is the power that brought brought this sozos or this complete wholeness to this man's life. So what what happened here? What transpired here? Jesus' death and his resurrection. This man seeing that, that power delivered a wholeness to this man, not just the ability for him to get up, 
You know, yep. we saw the, the miracles that Jesus did. Yep. You know, take up your bed and walk. We saw all of these things. We saw people raised from the dead. We saw Lazarus come forth. But because of the completed work of Christ, now this man not only has access to physical healing, where he can be made well, he has access to his spirit being being renewed, being right with God, and also his his soul being made whole and well, and him having mental and spirit, spiritual and physical and a complete total restoration, a complete healing. At the beginning of Acts 3, his body gets up. Yeah. But in Acts 4, his soul gets up. Yes. His spirit gets up. Yes. Like all of him gets right. up and is alive. Right. Because a lame man being laid at a gate for 30-some-odd years, right? he doesn't just have a physical infirmity. No, he doesn't. He's got some issues. There's a lot of stuff that comes with that. Yeah, he's got some emotional baggage. Yes. Like, he's worth nothing. Yes. Can't yet work. people are throwing money at right. him, yet he's worth nothing. Right. Because, you know, we, we talked about this when we dealt with uh, Acts 3, is that they laid him at the gate. It doesn't distinguish they, but it gives the connotation as if it's not family, but it's somebody who's profiting from his issue. Right, yeah, there's, there's something else involved. And so now he's being used for profit. Right. His ailment's being used for profit. That brings a whole other level. Right. Of emotional issues. Right. And that becomes his identity. That's right. No, he is the lame man at the gate. That is that even today, that's who you What's know, he's his referred name? to. We have What's no his name? idea. We don't know. He's a lame man at the gate. If somebody says, Hey, who's that guy at the gate? I don't know. He's yeah. just a beggar. He's, he's a lame guy. He's been he's been there all his life. That's right. Yeah, that's that, right. Pay that no become, attention to him. That that's becomes fine. who he is. Yep. That's why it's so important. Listen, I know a lot of people who have a good heart. They have a good heart, like a, a good heart. Man, they want to love God. But they haven't gotten this to that place. They haven't gotten this to that place, right. their mind. You know, Romans is clear. Be not conformed to this world. Be separate. Do right. not be conformed to this world. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your, of your mind. Of your mind. Transformation comes through the renewal of our mind. Well, how does renewal of our mind happen? You have to take on the mind of Christ right. in Christ. Right. There's a reason in Ephesians 6 that the helmet of salvation is a helmet that it goes over That's your right. Head. It goes over your head. Yeah. It's salvation. Like, yes. why isn't it over my heart? Right. Well, you got a breastplate right. of righteousness, righteousness. Yeah. right? That's guarding your heart. Right. But over your mind is salvation. Right. I mean, there's a lot to that. You don't get saved by thinking you're saved. Yeah, exactly. That's not what we're right. saying. But what we are saying is that for too long, when we say the church, we're just talking about believers in general have minimized yes. the mind. Right. This not is, overemphasize the this heart. This is where the battle is. Yeah. Because it's going here before it gets here. Oh, yeah. It's coming in here before it gets there. Absolutely. You know, we've said it uh, a lot. You know, 12 to 18 inches may be all you need to go for deliverance. Yep. Yep. Like Get, right here. Yeah. And that's the beauty of this, of this context is that what Jesus did gets all of that in sync. Yep. All of it, it puts all of that. This, this, it lines all of it. Even this physical body, it puts all of that in sync for one complete whole healing. And actually, if the guy gets healed physically, but is still a beggar and still has the same mindset, he's not a threat to these leaders. Absolutely. But if his body is healed and his spirit is healed and his soul is healed, yep. that's a threat. Yeah, now this Jesus thing has, has some authenticity Because to it. this guy now is walking in the power of the resurrection. Yeah. He's probably telling everybody this That's point. right, because he's whole. So verse 11, this is the stone which was rejected by you builders, which has become the chief cornerstone. Of course, uh, uh, quoting uh, Old Testament prophecy, mm -hmm. Psalm 118, um, you know, um, and talking about Jesus being uh, the stone that they didn't want. They didn't want him, but yet he is the cornerstone. Yeah. Verse 12, nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which me, we must be saved. Right. That is a key. No other name, right. no other gods, no other way. And another reason why he was so specific in making sure they knew exactly who they, he was talking about, the Jesus they were talking about. Yep. Yep. 